today we are going to discuss unwholesome consciousness before we start our second lesson just make a review on previous lesson i think you can remember last time we have discussed differences between ultimate reality and the concepts differences between anyati and paramartha then we classified ultimate realities into four sections consciousness mental factors matter and nirvana then the chitta or mind can be classified into four groups what are them i think you can remember in pali or in english kama vachara rupa vachara arupa vachara and lokottara sense sphere consciousness fine material consciousness immaterial consciousness and supramandian consciousness today we are going to learn one class of the sense sphere consciousness kama vachara chitta still we are in the chapter 1 and lesson number 2 i will repeat again lesson number 2 unwholesome consciousness in pali we call akusala chittam last week we discussed just we uh, introduced introduced the chittas kama vachara rupa vachara rupa vachara and lokottara senses here fine material immaterial and supramandian consciousness we can classify sense sphere consciousness into three groups what are they unwholesome sense sphere beautiful and fruitless unwholesome in pali we call akusala there are 12 unwholesome consciousness sense sphere beautiful consciousness in pali kama sobhana there are 24 sense sphere beautiful consciousness kusala vipaka and kriya that we will learn in detail then fruitless consciousness in pali ahetuka there are 18 fruitless consciousness today we pay attention for only unwholesome consciousness 12 akusala chitta what is the meaning of akusala how can we interpret this term according to the dhamma sangani commentary i have given the translation interpret interpretation that means the mind that can produce bad results are called unwholesome one of the main characteristic of unwholesome chittas or unwholesome nature is it can produce bad results 
that's the one of the main characteristics of unwholesome chittas the minds that can produce bad results we called unwholesome consciousness another thing those chittas are blameworthy themselves also seado silananda mentioned that it brings painful results suppose when someone to killing or stealing telling lies it is not praised by the wise person they are blamed by and also these natures are not praised by the world when you learn about the chetasikas also the nature of this chitta this consciousness is not a pure nature it's a spoiled or defiled nature people can understand when they pay attention with mindfulness after rising those natures then when they reflect those unwholesome natures they can understand this the unpure nature of this akusala chitta how can we classify those unwholesome consciousness we classify these unwholesome consciousness based on roots just pay attention for the meaning of root what is the function no what are the functions of root absorb the water fertilizer and when roots grab the ground well it is stands firmly then the trunk and the branches leaves the, the every parts of the tree can stand firmly on the ground similarly there are some natures mental factors like roots they can take the object very firmly they can grab the object very firmly they stand with the object firmly when they stand with the object the remaining chetasikas associated associated mental factors and its mind arise firmly stand firmly with with that unwholesome fruited consciousness there are three in unwholesome and three in wholesome what are the unwholesome fruits they are three you can see there are three roots greed hatred and delusion in pali greed lobha hatred dosa delusion moha when we will learn mental factors we will learn about these mental factors in detail in this chapter we pay attention mainly pay attention for the consciousness therefore just we don't go for detail just we know about the these three roots think about when you have attachment towards beloved person or when you watch a favorite movie you have played a favorite 
video game it runs in your mind for a long time for days for weeks for months sometimes for years that's the nature of the greed suppose when you get anger with someone else it's difficult to forget it's not easy to forget quickly it takes time to forget the reason is the hatred took that object very firmly therefore it takes time to overcome what is the nature of the delusion it conceals the reality ultimately those realities the the all the mundane realities are subject to impermanent suffering and non self a delusion conceals that nature it shows at it shows this world as permanent not the suffering full of pleasure can be controlled by ourselves that's the nature of moha that shows the wrong thing it conceals the reality think about our body our body full filled with impurities but moha shows us this body is very beautiful thing this just make a glance for these three roots later on we will learn about these mental factors in detail now we have learned three roots they are greed hatred and delusion how can we classify unwholesome consciousness based on these three roots actually delusion associates all the unwholesome consciousness it is connected with 12 unwholesome consciousness but we classify based on these three roots there are eight greed rooted consciousness we call in pali lobha mula chitta eight greed rooted rooted consciousness lobha mula chitta there are two hatred rooted consciousness in pali dosha mula chitta there are two delusion rooted consciousness in pali moha mula chitta all together there are 12 unwholesome consciousness greed rooted 8 hatred rooted 2 delusion rooted 2 in greed root rooted consciousness greed it greed is more evident in hatred rooted consciousness anger or hatred is more obvious delusion rooted consciousness moha or delusion is more obvious we can see greed we, we can see find both delusion and greed in greed rooted consciousness similarly we can find delusion and hatred in hatred rooted consciousness but in delusion rooted consciousness we have only one root that's only delusion or moha before going to name these 
consciousness just pay attention the conditions that we the conditions that decide the classification classification of the chittas one of the main condition is feeling of vedana i think you can remember that last week we told that what is the function of the mind function is just cognizing the object just knowing just mere knowing is called as mind vijnana or chitta but there are some other natures or other characteristics of the object each and every object has its flavor or taste whether good or medium or bad in other words whether desirable undesirable or neither desirable nor no undesirable each and every chitta has this this nature we call taste or flavor this flavor is tasted by another mental factor that's called feeling or vedana we classify the consciousness based on vedana there are three types of vedana pleasant unpleasant and neutral in pali somanasa domanasa and upekha polo mola chittas we need only two for those mola only one for moha mola only one so the usilananda mentioned that it's like a water mixed from two rivers when water mixed we cannot say this is from this river this is from this river suppose in india we cannot say this is from ganji river this is from narmada or whatever hmm? and the same example was given by venerable nagasena in milinda panna venerable nagasena mentioned that when someone take a cup of water from ocean can we say the taking drop by drop this drop came from this river another drop came from another river it's it very very difficult thing whenever nagasena mentioned that classifying the chitta mind and mental factors is more and more difficult than this thing therefore buddha had buddha had done one of the most difficult thing by classifying this one nature into various types of consciousness and mental factors and materiality regarding 
classification of the consciousness we have mentioned that one is feeling regarding lobhamula chittas another one is there are three conditions for lobhamula chittas greed rooted consciousness feeling wrong view and prompting regarding greed rooted consciousness there are two types of feelings either pleasant or neutral feeling in pali somana sahagata o upekka sahagata either pleasant feeling or neutral feeling we just pay attention for this first condition when you have attachment think about the nature of that mind sometimes it's with pleasant feeling when you see a desirable object you attach it you have a joy you have a happy the nature is pleasant you have a pleasant full feeling there is object also but um it's also a desirable object but due to conditions of that uh, weather conditions or any other conditions that's not match fit with you at that time you attach but you don't have pleasant feeling you have you don't have joy just neutral that's the nature of feeling arise in love greed rooted consciousness next condition is wrong view in pali miccha ditti or we also use ditti in this unwholesome consciousness we take the wrong view as believing that there is there there are there are some persons who believe that there is no karma or there is no result of karma there is no law of karma they think that similarly like trees and mountains and earth human beings and other beings born and they die there there is no life after death that's the one type one type of from from view they also believe that no this exist no this existence or no life no other existences like divines or brahmas demons hungry gods like this petas when chitta associates wrong view we call dikhigat dikhigata sampayutta in pali i will repeat again when the consciousness arise with wrong view we call dikhigata sampayutta without wrong view we call dikhigata vipayutta in this class i do not expect to memorize the names of the chittas in pali if you can memorize that's good but at least try to memorize the names of the chittas names of the consciousness in english at least because without having a good foundation from the previous lesson we can't go to future lessons next lessons therefore we should have established knowledge of 
previous lessons to follow the next lessons. They have a connection between each other. Third condition is prompting or unprompting. Prompting in Pali, Sathankarika. Unprompting in Pali, Sankarika. What is the mean, meaning of prompting? Bikubodhi mentioned that it's an inducement or instigation or encouragement. This instigation or encouragement can be done by yourself or others. Suppose when you are doing something, you are reluctant to do it. You do not have energy. At that time, you think about the benefits of that thing. This is, not, this is for all the actions, whatever actions. Then you encourage your mind by yourself. After that, you do, you perform that action. At that time, we call Sankharika Chitta Sarai. It does with prompting. Sometimes our mind is very weak. At that time, we are not able to encourage by ourselves. Our teachers, our friends, our parents encourage us to continue that work. At that time, the encouragement is encouragement is given by others. Those chittas also called as sasankarika. When consciousness arises spontaneously, you have energy. No need to encourage by other self or yourself again and again. You can continue that work diligently. At that time, we call unprompting consciousness arise. In Pali, asankarta. Now you have learned three conditions of Lobamula Chittas. Feeling, wrong view, and prompting. There are two types of feeling for Lobamula Chittas, recruited consciousness, pleasant feeling or neutral feeling. Regarding wrong view, whether with wrong view or without wrong view. Regarding prompting, either prompting or unprompting. Those who have learned Abhidhamma previously can classify these chittas. Suppose there are some chittas arise with pleasant feeling, arise with unpleasant feeling. Some chittas arise with wrong view, with wrong view, without wrong view. Unprompting or prompting. So there are three conditions. What is the possibility? Possibilities. There are eight possibilities. Four pleasant, four unpleasant. Four with wrong view, four without wrong view, four unprompting, for prompting. If so, let's give the name. Let's classify these chittas one by one. First one is consciousness with pleasure, with wrong view, 
unprompted. Those who know Pali, pleasure, Somanasa Sagata, wrong view, Dittigata Sampayutta, unprompted, Asankarika. So the first chitta is with pleasure, with wrong view, unprompted. Somanasa Sagata, Dittigata Sampayutta, Sankarika. Second one, with pleasure, with wrong view, prompted. Pleasure in Bali, Somanasa Sahagata, wrong view, Dittigata Sampayutta, prompted, Sasankharika. With pleasure, with wrong view, prompted, Somanasa Sahagata, Dittigata Sampayutta, Sasankharika. Third one, with pleasure, Without wrong view, unprompted. Without wrong view in Pali, Ditti Gata Vipa Yutta. With pleasure, without wrong view, unprompted. So Manasa Sahagata, Ditti Gata Vipa Yutta, Sankharika. Fourth one, with pleasure, without wrong view, prompted. In Pali, Somanasa Sahagata, Dittigata Vipa Yutta, Sasankharika. Fourth one is with pleasure, without wrong view, from Ted. Fifth one. Now we have completed four great rooted consciousness associated with pleasure. Now we are going to learn remaining four jittas associated with neutral feeling. In Pali, what is the word for neutral feeling? Upekha. With neutral feeling, with the wrong view, unprompted. Neutral feeling, Upekha Sahagata, wrong view, Dittigata Sampayutta, unprompted, Sankharika. Pekka Sahagatan, Dittigata Sampayuttan, Sankharikan. Sixth one, with neutral feeling, with a wrong view, prompted. Pekka Sahagata, Dittigata Sampayutta, Sasankharika. Number seven, with neutral feeling, without wrong view. Without wrong view, in Pali, Dittigata Vipayutta. Unprompted, with neutral feeling, without wrong view, unprompted. Upekka sahagata, dittigata vipa yutta, asankharika. Number eight, with neutral feeling, without wrong view, prompted. With neutral feeling, without wrong view, prompted. Upekka sahagata, upekka sahagata, Dittigata Vipayutta Asankharika. This is for participants, those who know Pali. Don't be afraid about Pali. Just um, for your knowledge, those who have learned Pali, this will be useful for them. That's why I put the Pali names in this slide. Now this is time to think how those chittas arise in your mind. I I give one more minute to think how Lobamula chittas arise in your mind. We can discuss later after the lesson in question and answer lesson. Just think how greed rooted consciousness arise with pleasure, arise with neutral feeling, arise with wrong view, 
arise without wrong behavior. How greed rooted consciousness arise unprompting and prompting. I take an uh, example of uh, stealing. Suppose group of boys going to a restaurant. They, they don't have enough money. They have money, but they don't have enough money to or oh, buy the foods that they want. There are a number of food, food items. They give money to buy some foods and they steal some other, other item, food items. That are very delicious. Which type of chitta rise at that moment? They have pleasurable feeling. The object is very desirable object. Now let's move into the wrong view. They think that. These are not only for the owner, everything. Were, were given by God. God gave everything to us, not for only him, to for the, all the beings. That's one type of wrong view. They think that God gave foods and other everything to all the people to quench, to satisfy their hunger. They steal with that wrong view. No need to encourage by other selves or by themselves. Which type of chitta arise at that moment? They have pleasant feeling, they have wrong view, they have unprompted nature. That is the first type of chitta. Pleasant feeling with wrong view, unprompted. Samanasa Sahagata, Dikhigata Sampayukta, Asankharika. We just change only one, one condition in this incident. We steal with pleasure, with pleasurable feeling, having a wrong view that God gave everything for all beings, not only for the restaurant owner. That's a wrong view. But due to some other conditions, they see uh, policemen or sometimes uh, 
owner is friend of his uh, their their uh, parents mm? regarding some other conditions they have they are they are reluctant to steal but there are some other friends encourage them oh don't don't care about it we can do it don't worry at that time some of other friends encourage to do it again after that getting that encouragement they steal food from restaurant which type of chitta rice there is a pleasure wrong view but no unprompted that's prompted prompted by himself or others that's second type of chitta somana sasahagata tithigata sampayutta sasankarika with pleasurable feeling pleasant feeling wrong view and prompted remaining chitta sa now we can classify easily object is desirable object but this time they do not think as they do not have wrong view they know that this person earn money with his effort without his effort god cannot give him money they do not have wrong view in the third incident but they steal with pleasurable feeling without prompting at that time chitta with pleasant feeling without wrong view unprompted tomanas sahagata dithigata vipayukta sankarika fourth one they have pleasure while doing stealing they do not have wrong view but they are encouraged by others at that time prompted conscious mind arise great rooted consciousness with pleasure without wrong view that's prompted fourth one somanasa sahagata dithigata vipayutta sasankharika those are the four incidents for somanasa chittas great rooted consciousness with pleasure now let's move into the great rooted consciousness with neutral feeling suppose they are going to steal but the food items are um, not delicious they have only hung they are they are they are feeling with hunger they are oh, they steal the food at that time neutral feeling arise in their mind when they have wrong view that god gave everything for all the beings without encouragement or without instigation chitta is unprompted fifth one create rooted consciousness with neutral feeling with wrong view unprompted upekka sahagata dithigata sampayutta asankharika number 6 they steal because of 
instigation or encouragement. At that time, pre-rooted consciousness with neutral feeling, with wrong view, prompted. Pekka sahagata, dithigata, sampayutta, pasankharika. Number seven, stealing, no wrong view. They don't have wrong view. At that time, the Tigata Vipayutta. Great rooted consciousness with neutral feeling, without wrong view, unprompted. In Pali, Utekasahagata, the Tigata Vipayutta, Asankarika. The last one, for number eight, with neutral feeling, without wrong view, instigated by others encouraged by others, Pasankharika. With neutral feeling, without wrong view, prompted. Pekka Sahagata, Ditti Gata Vipayutta, Pasankharika. Those are the eight Chittas that arise based on stealing. You can think about other unwholesome actions such as telling lies, now let's move into the second group of unwholesome consciousness, that's hatred rooted consciousness. There are two types of hatred rooted consciousness. Number one, consciousness with displeasure, anger, unprompted. Consciousness with displeasure, anger, prompted. You can think about many examples that arise in your life. I will give one more example. When someone point out your fault in front of others, at that time, you do not have pleasurable feeling or you do not have neutral feeling. When if anger arises, at that time, you have it the displeasure and anger. When anger arises suddenly, that's unprompted. In Pali, we call Tomanasa Sahagata Patika Sampayutta Asankharika. For the second chitta, consciousness with displeasure, anger, prompted. Suppose when your friend blame you because of your fault. You do not get, you do not be angry suddenly, but your friends told that. Don't be silent. You have to tell something. Then after the encouragement, of your friend, you also blame him again. At that time, conscious, the hatred rooted consciousness arise with displeasure, anger from that. Anger always we call patiga, we call patiga means striking or colliding. It's striking with the object. Therefore, when anger arises, no pleasurable feelings arise in, the, in your mind. There is no uh, neutral feeling. You have a displeasure. Therefore, the taste in the flavor is displeasurable feeling. 
Therefore, we can find only two chittas in hatred to the consciousness. That's with displeasure. It differentiates based on only prompting and unprompting. Consciousness with displeasure, anger, unprompted. In Pali, domana, con, uh, displeasure means domana sasahagata. Anger, patika sampayukta. With anger, patika sampayukta. Unprompted, asankharika. Domana sasahagata, patika sampayukta, asankharika. Second chitta, consciousness. With displeasure, Domanasa Sahagata. With anger, Patika Sampayutta. Prompted, Sasankharika. Domanasa Sahagata. Patika Sampayutta. Sasankharika. So there are two hatred rooted consciousness in Pali, Dosa Mula Chitta. We have already discussed some occasions in which dosa chitta or hatred rooted consciousness arises. Think about other occasions. When jealous arise in your mind, when someone see a beautiful girl or handsome boy, Some person's mind do not like it. Oh, he's very beautiful. Oh, she, she's very beautiful. He's very handsome. Try to find some minor mistake in their life because of jealousy. When, when someone see uh, wealthy person who earn money righteously. When someone see his house or cars, he says that, oh, he earn money in a bad way. He's not a righteous person. Because he can't accept his achievements. He can't accept the success of others' life. At that time also, the hatred consciousness arises. That's a striking with object. Also, when stinginess arises, when a beggar come to your home, there are plenty of foods in your home, but you hide that food. At that time, stinginess arises with the striking nature. That's also the stinginess arises with hatred. Later on, you will learn in details when you learn about the chetasikas, mental factors. It is just for your knowledge. Now we have done 10 unwholesome consciousness, eight greed rooted, and two hatred rooted. Remaining two are delusion rooted consciousness, two mohamula chittas. There are two mohamula chittas consciousness with neutral feeling with doubt. In Pali, we call doubt as vichikicca. Second one, consciousness with neutral feeling, with restlessness. For the restlessness, Pali term is uddhacca. First one, consciousness with neutral feeling, doubt. In Pali, Upekka sahagatan, vichikicca sampayuttam. Second one, consciousness with 
न्यूट्रल फीलिंग रेसलेसनेस उपेक्षा सहगता उद्धच्च संपयुक्ता There are two interpretations given in the commentary for vichikicha. One is perplexed thinking, or we, you can't take a decision. You are wavering whether this is right or wrong. Another one, right, right or wrong. You can't stand on your decision. You can't take the decision firmly. The next interpretation is there is no remedy for it. I don't want to go to the Pali, Pali terms. The next one is there is no remedy for it. Those who have doubt, even though Buddha is difficult to remove is which itcha, is so her which itcha, doubt. That's why it said that there is no remedy for it. In the teaching of Abhidhamma, we do not take all the doubts. Here we take doubt about the Buddha, doubt about the Dhamma, doubt about the Sangha, doubt about the practice, that's virtue, concentration, and wisdom, sila, samadhi, and panya. Then doubt about four noble truths and doubt about dependent origination in Pali, Patcha Samupada. Those who have doubt about the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, and the practice, and four noble truths, and dependent origination. We call that Vichikicha Chitta arise or doubtful Chitta arise in him. We do not take all the doubts. Therefore, in this, the teaching of the unwholesome consciousness, we take these types of doubts, not the all types of doubts. Suppose when you are going somewhere else, there's a junction. You don't know, you should go to the left or right. At that time, doubt arises in your mind. Those doubts are not considered as unwholesome in this uh, chitta, regarding this chitta. So, Chandavila Mahathera also mentioned the same type of explanation, doubt, doubt. Doubts on Triple James, Karma and its results and rebirth. Bhikkhubodhi gave example that person doubts the enlightenment of the Buddha or the efficacy of the Dhamma as a way to deliverance because of uncertainty. That's the nature of uncertainty. Someone has doubt. By practicing Eightfold Noble Path, can we attain Nirvana or not? Did the Buddha attain Four Noble Truths by himself or taught by others? So those types of doubt, doubts arise in Buddha or Dhamma or other uh, objects as we mentioned. We call that unwholesome type of doubt arise in his or her mind. Normally scholars told that those who have good Dhamma knowledge, this type of chitta do this type of chitta does not arise. If so, what are the reasons to arise doubt? The reasons are, one criticizes the things or teachings that cannot be experienced by five faculties or by our ordinary mind. 
someone say someone says that we can't see divine worlds we can't see brahma worlds we can't see hell therefore there is no hell and someone listen to some talks about wrong views or as i mentioned that criticizing the buddha dhamma sangha for noble truths or dependent origination because of the reading those books or listening to those talks or teachings doubt may arise in our mind therefore try to avoid the person who criticize those things and spread the wrong wrong teachings and to avoid of reading and listening such type of talks this is the chitta the first chitta of momula upekka sagata chikitsa sampayutta what is the next one or last one upekka sagata uddhacha sampayutta the consciousness with neutral feeling with restlessness there are a couple of couple of examples given in the commentary to explain uddhacha till is like a wavering water surface suppose when you throw a stone to the water surface you can you can see the ripples the waves arise on the surface similarly when some object come to your mind your ne- your calmness destroy by that object your mind is like a shaking water surface it's a shaking just you close your mind just you close your eyes and pay attention to the mind at that moment you can feel the shaking nature of the mind also it's like a scattered ash when you throw a stone to pile of ash at that time it is scattered everywhere similarly when restlessness arises in, in our mind our mind is scattered difficult to concentrate scatter here and there scatter to many object going to one after one one after another when you try to concentrate our mind it's difficult to concentrate because of restlessness also you have seen the flag shaking because of the wind It's always shaking similarly when uthaj arrives in our mind our mind shaking like a flag chandramana mahathera gave some reasons for arising restlessness doing many works at once suppose when you are doing many works you can't uh, be hide overloading at that time you can't concentrate your mind your mind is agitated with you do not have concentration calmness you do not have rest in your mind and also suppose you face some unexpected incident suddenly suppose when you are going on the way um you face to some car accident or bike accident you do not get injured 
but at that time your mind is not calm you can't decide what should i what should be done at that time restlessness arise in your mind also when dream works fast restlessness arise this is not always but but almost i would say mm-hmm. therefore when you are doing meditation meditation masters advise to do your daily works slowly it's especially advised in mahasi method when you do your works it be slowly you can do it mindfully at that time you can overcome your restlessness See, there there may be a question arise in your mind regarding the great rooted consciousness and hatred rooted consciousness we have prompting and unprompting asankarika and asankarika but here regarding doubt and restlessness we can't find either prompted or unprompted what is the reason sandeva mahathera also mentioned that doubt and restlessness are congenital or inherent natures of the being therefore they arise simultaneously unprompted therefore they are always unprompted asankhara we don't want encouragement for the restlessness we don't want encouragement to arise doubt but there is a the support dependent support of uh, listening to wrong dhamma talks wrong wrong uh, teachings and reading books those are the prior conditions but these natures are inherent with our mind the remaining mental factors are also inherent but um, regarding doubt and restlessness we don't want such encouragement by ourselves or by others they are the congenial nature they have the such nature therefore they always arise unprompted today we have discussed unwholesome consciousness there are all together 12 unwholesome consciousness eight greed rooted two hatred rooted two delusion rooted consciousness there are conditions are feeling prompting and unprompting regarding greed rooted consciousness there are two types of feelings pleasant feeling and neutral feeling regarding view with wrong view without wrong view prompting and unprompting for hatred rooted consciousness always arise with displeasure with anger either prompting prompted or unprompted there are two delusion rooted consciousness mohamula chitta always with neutral feeling one is with doubt another one is with restlessness those are the 12 unwholesome consciousness next next week we will learn wholesome consciousness also in sense sphere trial that's karma sobhana chitta next week we will learn karma sobhana chitta sense sphere consciousness we will learn three classes of uh, uh, karma sobhana chitta kusala vipaka and kriya 
next week next next week we will learn those three tasks you have uh, exercise and will be given after the class try to answer the uh, questions and knowledge time for your questions Yes, please ask your question number one. Thank you. Thank you. Very Good, much. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sante. Uh, it was a nice talk. And uh, one question I would like to ask is uh, related to Upekha Sahagatam Dekhi Gata Vipuit Kang Asankhari Kang Chittang. So uh, when it comes to this Chitta, it sounds more of like such a wholesome kind of Chitta, isn't it? I mean, you know, it is uh, with the Upekha, it is with the uh, they, it, it, it is without the two and uh, it is a sankhar coming so so it sounds uh, such a wholesome state of mind although it is of course accompanied with the uh, greed you know mm -hmm. greed is at the root so uh, is this the kind of chitta that uh, an individual has while uh, one is on the path of you know uh, spirituality or meditation although have not attained any nibbana of any kind Mm. As you mentioned, um, we decide mainly based on the nature of the chitta, uh, whether it's wholesome or unwholesome. We do not. The feeling is not the not the condition that decide whether it's wholesome or unwholesome. Whether it's pleasant with a pleasant feeling or neutral feeling, that can give painful results in the future. Therefore, we call them as unwholesome. But in the in some sense, someone someone may feel that it's like a something like ethical, um, but. We have to we have to based on the the philosophy of the Abhidharma. Therefore, we mainly focus for the nature of the mind and the mental factors. Those natures are not pure natures. Those natures are defiled natures, spoiled natures. Defiled natures cannot give pure results. Suppose when you plant a mango seed, you will get mango fruit. Similarly, greed fruited consciousness give bad results, not the good results. Therefore, we should pay attention, we should focus for the nature of the mind and mental factors, whether they are wholesome or unwholesome. If it's unwholesome, it, it can give bad results. If it's wholesome, it can give good results. So this is the ruler we have to decide whether wholesome or unwholesome, not the feeling or not the prompting or unprompting. Okay. Have any other questions?
ವಂದಾನಿ ಬಂತೆ so as uh, as uh, i have understood by your uh, uh, this lessons that there are already there in nature wholesome or unso- unwholesome they are in nature mm-hmm. so that is left to us to whether to go for unwholesome or wholesome and that mm-hmm. where the consciousness works right bante mm, next week we will learn uh, wholesome consciousness uh just in brief wholesome means okay wholesome uh, mm. means um, the chittas or the natures uh, that can give good results in the future or they are the next interpretation is they are praiseworthy by themselves therefore we called wholesome in pali we call kusala there is another interpretation we call uh, skillfulness but the the first two are fit with karma and it, its results therefore I, i i would like to say first two uh, the chitta mind and mental factors that can give good results and the natures they are pure they are praiseworthy by themselves so next next week we will learn we will learn with examples what are the wholesome what is the nature of the wholesome what are the classifications okay well thank you very much seems to be that there are no other questions mm. so i would like to thanks as a group and we also we should thanks um to our devotees who support for internet connection and zoom application zoom account and negotiating and organizing everything also by uh, uh, streaming live streaming and also making flyers um, and arranging everything um, so therefore we should give thanks to all of them uh, who contributed to success our class finally let's share merits to uh, deities and all the beings by reciting one stanza akashatha ch bhumatha devana ga mahidika unyantam anumoditha chiran rakhantu satanam akashatha ch bhumatha devana ga mahidika ಪುಣ್ಯಂತಂಗನುಮೋದಿತ್ವಾಚಿರಂ ರಕ್ಷಂತು ದೇಶನಂ ಆಕಾಶಟ್ಟಾಚಭೂಮಟ್ಟಾ